I'm Steve from This Week with Cars, and what I have here is an engine from a 1952 MGTD. This car has been sitting since 1966, so the engine is probably seized up. Uh, put a wrench on it, we'll test that out, see if I can free it up. And uh, this engine really needs to be taken apart. Uh, I don't know if water's, how long water sat in the engine. Could be a lot of damage in here. Uh, with the way that the heads are made on these, you get a lot of corrosion and a lot of leaking through the water passages, so we'll want to check that out pretty good. So, uh, we'll get down to the teardown. First, let's see if it's stuck. Okay, I'm just tightening the nut. I'm not actually moving the crankshaft, so I'd say it's probably stuck pretty good. Not really anything I can do about it here, so I'm just going to have to take it apart. Right, here's our first item, the water pump. It does still move, but you can see there's a chunk missing out of the pulley. That's quite common on these cars. It's actually a lot more common on some of the later cars. They made the pulleys even cheaper. Uh, in fact, they just uh, would rivet two pieces of basically sheet metal together, together to create a pulley. This one feels all right. If it was greased, might feel really good. Shows that the oil is still at the minimum level. Here's the distributor. Still turns freely. Obviously the points are very corroded, extremely white. Spark plugs were already loose and there's a red oil dripping out of here now so somebody must have taken the spark plugs off at one point and put something in there to try to free the engine up. Before I take the head off, I want to take this plate off and show you what's inside there. I think this plate is here because they needed a hole for casting the head because the technology wasn't there to cast a shape like this without having a hole here. And a lot of crud tends to back up here in this water passage and these plates will actually corrode from the inside out and I've seen holes actually come through these plates here. Another thing that happens is that these bolt holes leak because corrosion has happened in there and then you have to use a lot of sealant to, get to try to stop those from leaking. So this is the big problem area on these engines and let's take this plate off and see how bad this one is. All right, you can see some of the crud that's built up on the back of this plate. 
there is a lot of pitting in it. I don't know if you can see it from there. You have to media blast this to see the full extent, but this one looks a lot better than most, and I think that's due that this car has been off the road for a long time, probably only driven for about 10 years of its life. Okay, it's really bad in here. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, well, definitely wasn't expecting to see it being this bad. Let's take a look at the bottom of the head first. So if we look at the bottom of the head, you can definitely see that we have some issues here. A lot of corrosion here on these valves. Those valves are probably rusted shut. Whole bunch of crud sitting in this cylinder as well. These two are definitely the worst. This one is worse than the other. Looking inside of the cylinders right now, I can see that this one is very rusty. The one that matches up with this here. And this one, I'm not even sure what's going on in there. And I'll show you that in a second. All right, here's what I'm looking at. You can see on the wall of this cylinder right here. Look at that. Very, very crunchy there. This one is full of something. It's all kinds of gunk in there. This piston should be at the same height as this one. So that's how far down that piston is there. Look at that one. And just, it's just all full of crud. So looks looks like mud almost so I imagine these two cylinders uh, may not be able to have the rust machined out of them so we may have to sleeve the engine we'll have to see what we can do once we get it cleaned up obviously this is the reason why the engine won't turn anymore there's no way that the pistons will be able to come up and scrape through this much uh, rust and crud Somebody has completely rounded off the oil drain plug. So I'm going to have to hope that I can pound some socket on there that will be able to grab it. Looks like the lifters are stuck, at least some of the lifters. This one here is stuck. have the oil pan off now so we can take a look inside these engines have a real uh, air of quality to them you can see that all the bolts have cotter pins in them looks like someone has replaced this rod at some point and they didn't use the original nuts there we can also see down on these cylinders that are in the current up position that the cylinder walls do look really good on those two cylinders so those are still in good shape. It's these two that were down that have gotten ruined. So someone's definitely been in here before. They've replaced this rod or at least done some work to this rod. I'm sure when I get all of this apart, we'll find out that it probably has non-standard bearings in it as well.
Let's pop the caps off of these rods and take a look at them. You can see inside this cap where the bearing surface was starting to get worn right there. This is the last of the rod caps. I have all four of them removed now. And I have, of course, keeping them in order and in the placement that they were on top of the rod. Well, I found the problem with the engine. The number four rod here is actually broken off from the piston down in there. If you look down inside this piston, you can see that the rod is no longer attached down there. It's been banging around on the bottom side of that piston. In fact, you can see only wrist pin right there. So I think I'm going to pound this piston out and we'll take a look at the bottom side of this. Here I have the piston out and I was able to squeeze the rod out uh, past the crankshaft there. You can see how much damage is done on the inside of the piston there. The end of the rod is gone. When I took the oil pan off, I could hear things rattling around in the bottom of it, but it does have almost a windage tray in there. So I was not able to see what was down in the bottom of that, but I'll have to unbolt that and get that cleaned out properly. So this would explain why this uh, engine and the car sat for so long, had a dead cylinder and either they didn't know how to get it replaced, especially being here uh, in the Midwest, there wouldn't be a lot of places that in a period of time would work on these cars or even know where to get any parts for them. So a lot of times they sat for a very long time. And I think we found our culprit right now. It's just too bad that they let all that rust get inside of the cylinders because if it weren't for that, I could just throw new bearings, a rod and a piston in here and it would probably be just fine. But now we have to deal with all the rust that's in these middle two cylinders. I'll get the rest of this torn down and hopefully I don't find anything else. You can see these washers have a hole in there. There's a little pin on this washer that keeps everything from spinning. That way nothing is loosening. Just a little side tip, you always want to store your crankshafts standing up. It puts a lot of stress on them if you lay them down sideways. So if you can, always stand them up or even better, hang them up. One thing I did want to show you while I had the crankshaft out, is a lot of people talk about British cars uh, leaking oil. Well, most of them don't have a rear main seal. Most of them just have the scroll that is used to scroll the oil back that's coming out of the basically rear main bearing on the crankshaft. So instead of a seal, you just have this little auger that brings the oil back into the engine. And that's why your British car leaks a lot. You can see down in here now, you can see the cylinder that had that damaged piston. Looks all right in there. This one here should be fine. I'll just pull that one up and out of there. And then these, I may have to pound them out We'll see if they move easily or not. These two pistons are really stuck in there. I'm going to flip the engine back over and pound those out. Now that I've had the engine flipped upside down, these cylinders could drain and you can see how horrible that is. That's all that crud that was sitting on top of the piston. 
I have no idea what someone put in here, but whatever it is, it's really nasty uh, stuff. Almost looks, I don't know. No idea what it is. I don't know if they filled it with grease and then later on maybe someone put some transmission fluid in there with it. It is very soft though. It's not gritty. So we'll get those pounded out and we can see how bad this really is. And maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was because maybe this stuff is not rust. It's actually something else that someone put in there. Those are really stuck in there. Probably not going to come out without damaging them. Got one out. You can see how rusty it was along the side. All that rust on all that area. That can put a tremendous amount of friction to hold these in place. Looks even worse than the last one. A lot of rust along the sides there. You can see that the rings are just completely rusted uh, as much compressed into the piston as possible. It's just completely smooth. This would have no compression if you were to fire this up, let alone the wrist pin doesn't move either. Because of the design of the center cam bearing, I'm going to leave the camshaft in place for now and I'm going to get this engine block into the engine washer so that we can get a better look at if this is even rebuildable or not. I've set it in the engine washer. I'm going to close this up, run this for half an hour, an hour, depending on how long I think it's going to need. I'll check it periodically. And Keep running it. We'll check it out once it's done. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got. You can see the engine has been painted at least twice before. Neither of these colors are the original color. There is still quite a bit of gunk here. Seems to be wiping off though. This one looks like it's got a lot more actual rust in it. Hopefully once these cylinders are bored out that they'll still be usable. I think that you can get pistons up to 80 over for this engine. So there's a pretty good chance. As long as this hasn't been machined a lot before. We do know that someone has been in here. Possibly replaced a a piston or a rod before. So the next step is to clean it up a little bit more and then get it over to the boring machine and see how much we need to take off until we've gotten through all of the rust. Standing straight up and down you can see a lot better down into those two cylinders. A lot of crud in there. Now that the engine's been cleaned up I've taken the camshaft out. Looks to be in pretty good shape. I will measure this a little bit, see if it's worn down any, but looks like it's probably going to be good to use again. Well, that's it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.